Hello uh, my dear YouTuber friends and I do hope you're all keeping well. Welcome to this new video back on the Velocity 1 flight stick and I'll be using this on the Xbox Series S later. Since it's released there's been a couple more firmware updates I believe firmware update 1.1.1 and 1.1.6 which is the latest firmware update and those essentially brings things like the mobile app capability I'll be showing you all kinds of different things with this later this is quite nifty and the different things you can do with this just moving my flight stick just to show you I'll be showing you that in more detail in this video let me just get that back to the overview. Things like Xbox compatibility, I'll be explaining that in this video too. It also comes with the capabilities of linking your Velocity 1 flight stick to the Velocity 1 rudders, which are still on my Turtle Beach flight stand. You can link these together as long as you have a compatible cable. I did order a cable, it's just a little bit too big, the ends of it are too big to get into the back of the Velocity 1 flight stick, be careful of that. I've actually contacted Turtle Beach to send me a compatible cable, so hopefully I'll be able to show you that soon, not in this video. In this video I'm going to concentrate on the mobile app companion, which is a nifty little thing I've got to say. does have a one issue, which I'll get into and also the Xbox compatibility mode, and I'll be showing you that on my Series S. Okay, let's not dilly-dally, let's get on with this video. Now I've gone over updating your Velocity 1 flight sticks in the original review video I did of this. I'm just going to add a couple of different uh, measures to this one. Now if you're on the Xbox and you've got it in Xbox mode, essentially you want to find on the Xbox store or if you're on PC like I am at the moment, just type in Turtle Beach Velocity 1 flight stick and you should get the Velocity 1 Flight Stick app. You need this particular app. It's got to be the Velocity 1 Flight Stick app, which will update your flight stick. As I've already got it, I'm going to open it. And as you'll see in a moment, it will tell me to put my flight stick. Well, it will tell me to choose my flight stick. And it will say, put it into Xbox input mode. So what I'll do here, I'm going to press escape on my or laptop and exit this and I'm going to come to my flight stick now I've already updated it but I'll go through it again here and I'm going to use this circle remember this circle in motion just move it clockwise to get to input and you click on the right to choose which one it's already on PC you can see PC has got a square over it I'm going to put into Xbox mode so I'm going to Select Xbox with the right, moving this clockwise again, this wheel. And then press this down. It will reset itself into Xbox mode. Now there's an extra step. Just give it a second. Actually, this sometimes happens when you put it into Xbox mode. It doesn't light up again. It just gives you a little light at the front there. What I'll do here is actually uninstall the plug. I'll take out the plug for the flight stick to my laptop or your PC, whatever you're using. This is specific for PC or PC generally. Plug it back in and it will reboot into Xbox mode. And we can double check that because you should see an Xbox icon there saying Xbox. So that's now in Xbox mode. So now, so once you've put it into Xbox mode, unplug it from your PC and plug it back in and it should all light up again. And it should say Xbox mode. I don't know why the app wants it in Xbox mode. Let's get back to my PC. I'm sorry, I'm not going to do this full screen because I wanted to show you the flight stick as well. Just to show you what will happen. Now, if you haven't, haven't updated it and you select your flight stick, what will happen is, it's in Xbox mode. 
it will say update available update now as you can see i've got the current firmware 1.1.6 or one decimal one decimal six and your device is up to date so you want to have this firmware one decimal one decimal six and it should say your device is up to date so i can come out of that and we're pretty much ready i'll come out of that in a moment we're pretty much ready now to download the app on your mobile phone and i'll show you how to do that Okay, so let's move on to updating the Velocity One, or installing rather, the Velocity One Stick Companion app. Now I'm going to show you this with shoddy camera work on my mobile phone. I'm using the S9, which I recently bought, by the way, for doing YouTube stuff, making shorts. I'll link my most recent short in the top right. I bought this secondhand. It's like as new, which is great. And for doing things like this, using apps that I can use in my videos as well. Just want to type into the Play Store, or if you're on iOS, this should work as well on the uh, iOS uh, App Store, or whatever it's called on uh, iPhone. Never owned an iPhone, do forgive me. And you should come up with Velocity One Flight Stick App. And you just want to make sure below, just ignore the little beeps and bobs. I must put my phone into flight mode. Uh... Use to customize your Velocity One flight stick settings from your mobile device. This is the app you want. So once you, you have that up, install it, of course. Let me just go bring the phone down. With Samsung phones, you just swipe down from the top and you could, should see your Bluetooth. If it's not on, turn it on. Um, and if it is on, hold down on the Bluetooth app and you should get an option first time you run it i do believe the flight stick is in bluetooth mode it's on by default if not use your little dial down below and just go to the bluetooth lighting bluetooth menu click into that and connection status let's just say it's connected so it should be on already, as long as you pair it from your phone. Now, I'm not going to actually pair the other devices there. <laughs> it will give you an option, do you want to pair the flight stick? Just say yes, and then it should come up connected. Once that happens, you can get to the, the actual companion app should load up. And you should have things like these green writings down here so next to lighting i've got c2 scheme i'll show you the lighting in a moment i'll show you all these stick response standard orientation right-handed and eq mode vocal boost so if i go to these three dots at the top here it will give you a side menu and let's choose dead zone sorry i'm having to peer over my phone because it's difficult to do this through the lens of the camera now, if you wanted to alter the dead zones, and I wouldn't recommend this, of your left and right axis, so moving your stick left and right, up and down, or twist your rudder axis. If you wanted to alter the dead zones, you can, using those plus and minus. Don't know why you would want to do that, but maybe some people do. And your levers as well. So if I move my right stick levers so right and left levers make essentially your throttle levers you will see it's one to one so as i move it it moves one to one on the mobile app as well that's quite nifty isn't it so if you wanted to alter your dead zones there you can let's go on to the next one which is lighting there's a bit of a caveat with this the most overused word in youtube history maybe or one of them but in this case it's particularly applicable because there is a bit of a caveat sometimes. It'll probably work fine for me now. I've got it on C2 scheme, which is what? Blue and green. And that's what it's showing. I'll put it on to C1, blue and yellow. Yep, it's changed to blue and yellow. These all work fine. C3, it's also pink and orange on the flight stick, or pink and red, I think it's meant to be. And all yellow. So yeah, it's quite handy to do this from the mobile app. And all blue. Now, the caveats that I found, or the issue I found, if I put it onto C6, it will work. It will go all white. 
But sometimes I wonder if it will work for me this time. Do it for me this time. If I go say C3, I want it all blue. Uh, it's not worked this time. It seems to be behaving itself now. When I tried this the first couple of times, let me know down below, guys, if you had the same issue. The base would stay on C6 white. Only the top part would change colour. Now it seems to be behaving as it should do. It's if I go to all yellow, yeah, it's all behaving now. Give that a try, and you can turn them off if you don't want the uh, LEDs off on a taller ghost. Just go to off there, or turn the LEDs off. That's the scheme I prefer, the sort of uh, blue and green at the moment. That's what I'm into. Yeah, blue and green. Well, there you go. It's quite handy to do this from a mobile phone. It's a bit twiddly to do this from the menu system. So you have to move this circle, then go up here, and then... It's doable, but you have to scroll through the menus and change your colour that way. It's just so easy. Just come to this. Want a different colour. There you go. I go all yellow. Want to get it back to my original colour, or the colour that I like, blue and green. Bingo. Handy little app. Let's just go to stick response. Try this in the sim. I've not got the sim running at the moment, but that standard is your default profile. Put it onto pre position. And actually, you'll probably see this on that little graph to the right there. As I move the stick, it's not responding quite as much. Not quite sure where you would use precision. I'm thinking some airliners that don't need a fast response. You need the actual responses toned down. Instead of going to sensitivities, you can try these different profiles from your mobile app. If you're flying... Fast jets, the fast one's brilliant for this. I'll just move the stick slightly. You'll see it's very, very responsive now. Very responsive when you play it onto fast. So if you're flying jets, Spitfire, that type of thing, fast is good. I'm going to put it back to standard. Whatever you alter here, be aware your flight stick is now in that configuration. If you go through the various menus using that circle uh, and the menu system here, you'll notice whatever you change here will stick on your flight stick, just be aware. So I'll put it onto standard, orientation, right or left handed, obviously I'm using it right handed. And we've got EQ mode, now I'm not going to show you this, it's going to be difficult to bring this cross across YouTube. I stuck a pair of he headphones in, listened to a bassy track, a track with a lot of bass. Uh, bass, I keep calling it bass. <laughs> a lot of bass, basically. Put it on to bass boost and you can really hear that bass coming through. If you're in a flight and you've got a pair of headphones, stick them into your velocity one and you can dance away <laughs> while you're flying. The best middle ground I found is vocal, vocal boost, basically. And that gives you a lot of bass and you can hear the singer as well as where people are singing over the track. You get the best middle ground with this one. But let me know down below which one do you prefer. This does work well, especially when you're listening to music. And again, it's just handy. You can just switch it up. Grab your mobile phone, switch it up. As long as you've got them paired over Bluetooth. And the last one here is your firmware update. It'll give you... Now... It did this before. I'm not going to re-record again. It should give you your firmware. I wonder if it's because I'm recording on my camera and it's interfering. It should just say firmware is up to date or your current firmware. At the moment, okay, well, that's what it's given me. Let me know if you're getting the same. If I begin update on the Velocity 1 flight stick, it will just say it's up to date. If I restart this app, it will just say the firmware update. Might be because I was messing around with all the different modes there, but that shouldn't matter. I have noticed a couple of bugs with this app. It's a, you know it's in its early iterations, so give it a bit of time, but the rest of it works fine. Let's go back to lighting now, see if that's still behaving. Yeah, pink and orange or pink and red. All yellow. Go to the white one. Yeah, it's going into white, but change it back to blue. No, yeah, no, it's all behaving fine now. So I'm not quite sure. This was misbehaving for me yesterday. Whenever I put it onto the white, just the base would stay white and the top part would change colour. Now it's all behaving. But the firmware update screen is... 
not a firmware version screen is misbehaving for me. Well, listen, that's the app. I think, look, Turtle Beach didn't have to do this, and I've got to give them some credit for putting this in. I think it's an amazing little thing, especially you know, a lot of us have mobile phones now, don't we? If you've got a smartphone, just install the app, and you can just change things up on the fly for your flight stick. Very good. Okay, so let's now go to the Xbox compatibility mode and talk about that. So now let's talk about the Velocity One flight stick game compatibility mode. So I'm going to link this page down below for you in the description. So with the latest firmware version 1.1.6 released on the first of 18th of the first 23, so it's, it's fairly recent. A new input mode to the Velocity One flight stick menu is called Compatibility Mode. I'm going to show you actually on screen how to get to that. It's just in Input Mode and then you just select Compatibility Mode. It's only for Xbox at the moment. So let's take that off screen now. So if you're using the Velocity One flight stick with the Series S and X to play Flight Simulator 2020, you need the standard Xbox, Xbox input mode. So don't put it in compatibility mode if you're playing Flight Sim 2020. Just put it on the ordinary standard Xbox mode. Basically, uh, compatibility mode helps expand game compatibility on Xbox. Some games have been coded with specific flight sticks in mind, le leading, leading to partial or no detection of the Velocity One flight stick controls. So I did get a question that recently on one of my videos that somebody couldn't play Elite Dangerous on the Xbox either X or S with the Velocity One flight stick. With the latest firmware update with the flight stick and compatibility mode, you should have no issues. I'm going to show you one of these games, Star Wars Squadrons, because it comes free with Game Pass, which I have at the moment on the Series S. So I'll be showing you this, I'll be showing you my flight stick in action, what it's like in standard Xbox mode, and then what it's like in compatibility mode. There is a difference. War Thunder, you can try yourself, you can just download that for free. I'm not really interested in War Thunder personally at the moment, but you can tr give that a try. And Elite Dangerous, if you've not been able to play it, I don't want to buy it again. I owe it I own it two t uh, twice at the moment for PC and PlayStation 4. But if you have Elite Dangerous on the Series SRX, give this a try. Like I said, I'm going to show you what it's like with Squadrons. On the PC, I did release a, a video fairly recently about me playing Elite Dangerous and Star Citizen with the uh, Velocity 1 flight stick. You do have to set up, there's no defeat. Uh, default profile available you have to set the buttons up and controls up yourself works wonderfully the flight stick with elite dangerous and indeed star citizen so go and watch that video if you haven't already i give you a few hints and tips of how the and show you a few settings of the velocity one flight stick with those games but we are concentrating on the xbox for this video so let me now show you how star wars squadron works with ordinary Xbox mode and the compatibility mode. Okay, so hopefully you can see that screen. You can see I'm on the Sirius S. Let me just bring in my camera now. There you go. So you should be able to see my flight stick as well. So I'm on ordinary Xbox mode on the Series S. Let's start Squadrons. Don't know if the sound's going to capture. I don't know if I've got this set up in OBS. Doesn't matter. This is just a demonstration. Doesn't take long to load, of course, with the Series S uh, hard drive. You've got an NVMe drive in it. So, A, going to cancel anything else connecting to the internet because we don't need it for this test. And we'll just get past all these splash screens. And we just go to multiplayer and training. So these are the default settings. I've not set anything else up with the Velocity 1 flight stick. For the Series S, we just go to practice. New Republic's fine. And this will just take a moment to load in. So default buttons are a bit, well, a bit finicky, as you will see. Uh, default loadout, so we'll just go deploy. Deploy in two seconds, one, zero. And we should be in the game imminently. Like I said, it doesn't take long at all to load in. 
So some controls work. I'm just going to throttle up. So left throttle does work as throttle. Trigger <laughs> on the default settings just lets you uh, move your view around with your flight stick, which is quite weird. Fire is actually the detent on that left throttle. So if you want to fire, that's your detent. So let's just, I've got it pretty much full throttle. Feels a bit stiff to be, not just the flight stick itself, I'm talking about it feels a bit numbed down the controls. When you're turning, rotating, you can use them. See, I'm going to try and fly in this and it's a bit difficult to control just with the ordinary default settings and I've got it in Xbox, just Xbox mode on the flight stick once again. And that fire being on that detent rather than the trigger <laughs> is a bit weird. But just moving around it just feels a bit a bit dampened would be the best way I can explain it. The controls just don't feel loose and limber. And I'm not talking, like I said, about the flight stick. It's quite uh, sensitive, quite fast. You could put, like I showed you before, with the companion app, you can put the control on fast and that should help a little bit to make them a bit more responsive. That's it, they're not very responsive, that's the word I'm looking for. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do, press the X button, come to home. Uh, there we go. And um, we'll just quit squadrons. And I'm going to put my input mode now into Xbox compatibility uh, compatibility mode. So there you go. Velocity 1, flight stick will reset. There you go, it's fully reset now. Now, if it doesn't work, just unplug your flight stick. Once you put it into a different mode, unplug it back in again. Wait for it to all light up. And for some reason, it's... Ah, there we are. It's working now. I'm going to say, for some reason, it wasn't working, but it is now. It just needed a second. So let's enter squadrons again. So this is with game compatibility mode now. Oh, well, got a wire here, but you probably can't see that on the camera. It doesn't matter. A to play, B to cancel, A. That's fine. Let's just get back into the game again. That's fine. Multiplayer and training. Practice. And New Republic will do. Let's just take a second. Do love the sort of new consoles. I guess they're not new now, but the current generation consoles, the speed of them, it's always very nice. And with this one, to enter, we just have to press... So if you're in game compatib compatibility mode, you have to press H2 in. By default, the default settings. You can play around with the settings, but it's more how responsive this is now. So let's throttle it up. And immediately, take all of the controls. I don't know if you can see that on screen, but it's just far more responsive. Using the same inputs. Fire now, thankfully, is on the trigger. I believe B6, oh, B7 lets you look around, which is a lot better. So if you need to look around, just press B7. Usually play this two-handed, by the way, but look at that. You can probably see and give this a try yourself with squadrons. Just far more responsive in-game compatibility mode. Feels far more fluid, should we say. Doesn't feel dampened. If I want to fly in and out of objects here, I'm just going to have no issues at all. And to have the fire button by default. So if you're not very good with settings, these settings with the game compatibility mode, with the latest firmware update, will get you going and should be fine for you. Well, listen, I won't draw out the video much longer. So there's a companion app with the latest update and game compatibility mode. Do give them both a try. I feel they make a great difference. Once again, Turtle Beach didn't have to include these from the start. They said they would from the start with the flight stick. And they just keep updating their products, which is nice. But let me know your own thoughts. Have you tried both these? The companion mode, companion app, and game compatibility. Let's turn around. Let me know your thoughts. Give the video oops, a like if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe for more. I'm going to die, aren't I? And I'll see you soon.